brought to you by tastycheats.com. So I have this photo montage going on here, which is kind of reminiscent of a 3D stereoscopic image. For this exercise, I'm going to play on this style and mix it up a little. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create these three effects in Adobe Photoshop. Now, to create these effects is actually really easy, and you can achieve these effects in just a few steps. What you will need, however, is some good quality images to work with. To create the effect, like this on the left, you will need at least three images. To demonstrate, I have purchased my images from a royalty-free image website, photojube.net. Now, if you attempt to use this effect, I suggest you try and cut your subject from any background that there might be. Luckily for me, the model is set on a white background. This is ideal. To add a bit of dynamic to the end result, you will need at least three different poses. For the background, I used an old paper texture, which I downloaded from a website here. Lots of free textures. Check it out. The link is in the description. So with all the images ready, let's get into it. So I'm going to create a new document and make the document size A4 and make sure it's set to portrait and the resolution 150 dpi. I'm going to choose a foreground color of F7E8C1 and use the paint bucket tool to fill the canvas. By the way, all colors mentioned in this video will be specified in the description. So now I need to start with the first image. Navigate to my image folder and open pose 1. Then I need to come to image mode and select grayscale. Next I'm going to come back to image mode but this time choose duotone. Keep in mind that to get to duotone you first have to make the image grayscale. In the type option I need to choose monotone which will give me one color option to choose from. Click the color box and choose a color. In this case, I'm going to enter in the color value 3D1F01 and click OK. And you will see that the image has now changed to this color. Now I'm going to click and drag my image into my new composition. Before I do anything else, I'm going to press Command G to group that layer into its own folder and rename the folder to Pose 1. Now, I'm not doing this for the sake of it. There are going to be lots of adjustment layers applied later, so grouping layers like so will keep them all separate and organized. Next, I'll press Command T to free transform, press Shift and Alt on the keyboard, then I'm going to click on the top right point and click and drag to scale up like so, then simply reposition. Next, I'm going to give this layer a blending mode. In the top left corner of my Layers panel, click the Option menu and set this to Multiply. This will blend the image to the background like so. Now, the image is looking OK, but I want to add some more contrast and minimize the midtones so the images I bring in later will overlap and give a more punchy result. To do this, I'm going to add an adjustment layer. Make sure you have your layer selected and not the group. At the bottom of the Layers panel, hit the Adjustment Layer button and choose Levels. Be sure to click the Clip button on the bottom of the Adjustment Layers panel. This is very important. It will mean that the Adjustment Layer will only be applied to the layer directly below, and not any other layers. Then, tweak the levels by pulling in the far left and far right point in like so. On this occasion, my values from left to right are 39, 1.00, and 190. Now, depending on the nature of your image, you may have to use different values. So experiment with this until you get an effect you are happy with. You can always come back later and change this because it's an adjustment layer and we have that flexibility. Next, I'm going to open up the Pose 2 image and again make this image grayscale, then come again to Image Mode and choose Duotone. This time, I will change the color to 00E7FF. Then drag the layer into my new composition, and again press Command G to group the layer, then rename the folder to Pose 2, press Command T to activate Free Transform, scale the image up, reposition, and add a Multiply Blending Mode. Now I can see they're overlapping here. 
I'll move the figure around and perhaps resize again until I get a position I'm happy with. Then, just like earlier, I'm going to add an adjustment layer. Be sure to hit the adjustment layer clip button and tweak the levels accordingly. My values here are 5, 6, 1.39, 1, 1, 9, 5. Now, in this instance, I can see I have some of this blue gritty texture going on here. To get rid of this, I can apply a layer mask to the layer in the group, and with the mask selected, simply choose a black brush and start to paint onto the mask layer, and mask away like so. Next, I'm going to open up the Pose 3 image, make this image grayscale, then come to Image again and choose Duotone. Change the colour to E, E, 0, B, 7, 8. Then drag the layer into the composition, press Command G to group, and rename the folder to Pose 3. Press Command T to scale the image up, and add a blending mode of Multiply. And I'm going to reposition and resize into a suitable place. With the layer selected, I'm going to add a Levels Adjustment layer. Be sure to hit the Adjustment Layer Clip button and tweak the levels. My values are 40, 1.38, 2, 1, 2. So that's looking pretty cool, but pay attention to the overlapping colours and try and move them so you get some nice overlapping effects. This will add to a more interesting image. So that's the images in place, and that's looking pretty cool. Now I could leave it like that, but I want to add a bit more texture to the background to give it a more vintage feel. I'm going to open my vintage paper image, copy and paste into my comp, and move the layer down under all my groups. I'm going to resize the image to get a better fit, and simply add a multiply blending mode to this. But this is looking a little intense, so I'll change the opacity to 70%. And that's how you can create that composition. So let's say you're not entirely happy with these colours. You might want to experiment with some other colours. Well, that's really easy. Simply come into your image groups, and add a hue saturation adjustment layer to the layers you wish to change the colour of, like so. And it's a simple case of toggling the hue to get some alternative colour effects, which of course you can come back and change again and again. So to create the next composition, the one here in the middle, it's a little different. This time, you don't need three images. In fact, I'm just going to use one. So with the background prepared, I'm going to open up my Pose 4 image, and in this case it's already black and white, but I still have to change the image mode to grayscale in order to then change the image mode to duotone. I'm going to change the colour to EE0B78, drag the image into my composition, group the image into its own folder. This time I'll just call the group pink. Scale up the image and add a Multiply Blending Mode. Then I'm going to duplicate the group and I'll call this green and scale the group up nice and big. Then I'm going to add a Hue Saturation Adjustment layer to this new layer in the top group and change it like so. Then just move your top image around to get a nice overlap of colour and that's looking pretty cool. Now, the last composition looks the most like the stereoscopic image. To create the last composition, I'm going to use the same image as in the previous example. So I'm going to toggle the visibility of the background pink group and move the green group into the centre. Now I'm going to duplicate the group and this time rename this group to red. Now the trick with this effect is to keep the layers the same size but just move them off each other slightly. So with the arrow keys, move the image over to the right a little, then come back into the adjustments layer I added earlier and toggle the hue saturation to something more red. Then I'm going to duplicate the group again and call this group yellow. This time, move the layer up with the arrow keys and again change the hue saturation adjustment layer, but this time try and give it a more yellow appearance. And that's looking pretty cool. So it's the blending mode multiply and the shades of colour that are creating the black areas 
in the middle here as they overlap. That's pretty cool, right? So that's how you can create a 3D stereoscopic style in Adobe Photoshop. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you liked the tutorial, hit the like button on my Facebook page and even add me as a friend. Always willing to chat to you guys and answer any questions. Don't forget you can download the documents you saw in this tutorial. All links are in the description. If you guys have a go at this yourself, be sure to come and paste it up on my Facebook wall. I'd love to see what you guys can come up with. Well, that's another video brought to you by tastitudes.com. Have fun, guys, and I'll see you next time.